I'm Steve for This Oak With Cars and today I'm back with the 1966 Mustang Convertible Project. First I want to address one of the issues I ran into last time. I could not find a battery that fit into the Mustang. So this is the battery that came out of it and I've had it on my charger in the repair setting for about two weeks. Let's find out if this battery is any good. This is my battery tester. Connect this up. You want to do this on a fully charged battery. So want to do a battery test. This is a regular battery. We have our cold cranking amps right here. So let's enter those in. 525. There we go. Now it's testing the battery. Battery health is 3%, so this is not a good battery at all. If I was to put this in the car, likely we wouldn't be able to crank the engine over for very long. So I searched all over the internet, and if you're in Australia, you're lucky because you can get batteries like this. But I did discover that AC Delco still makes batteries with the little clips over here, and this will fit perfectly in the Mustang. So if you need a battery for your old classic Mustang, maybe you want to go get a new AC Delco battery before you can't get these anymore. As you can see, the bracket just comes over the side of that lip. Then we can just tighten that down. Now the battery's not going anywhere. Everything is hooked back up again. Let's make sure it still runs. I have cleaned all the boxes out of the car. You get a good look at that pony interior now. The seats are also now bolted in. I can actually sit in the car this time. I'll give it a couple pumps. Still runs. All pressure's coming up. Looks like we're charging. Tachometer is working. That looks good. We know it runs, but is it going to stop? Let's see if it even has any brake fluid in it. Yes, it is full. I don't think I've even hit the brake pedal yet. In the back, I'm going to move my wheel chalk forward so the car can move forward. It won't be able to go back any further than it is. That way, if the brakes don't work, the wheel chalk should stop it. This way we can test, does the transmission work? Will the car move forward and back? And do the brakes work? Looks like it will drive. Brakes do work. That means they were really, really close to having this car done. It's too bad they never got to drive it. Check the coolant level. That looks fine. I've already checked the oil and the transmission, so I know those are full. Unfortunately, we can't take the Mustang outside today because it is literally a blizzard out there. I can't even open the door that I came through. Yeah, that's, I think that's about as far as that's going to go. You see, it just gets deeper and deeper. So we're definitely not driving the Mustang today. Since we can't go outside today, I figured we'd install this decal kit. This is a 15 piece decal kit from Jim Osborne Reproductions. This is an authorized Ford part, but it is not from Ford. This is all the decals that would have been on the car when it left the factory. I haven't seen any real good guides about where to place all these. So maybe this will be helpful. 
And if I end up putting one of these in the wrong spot or at the wrong angle, I'm sure that you guys will comment below. Here is all the pieces that came in the kit. Uh, you would have a different sticker right here depending on which engine size you have. But I think all the rest of them are pretty much standard. The first decal I'm going to put on is the battery inspection sticker. And these were really placed by workers as the car went along the line. So they may be in slightly different places. And of course, over time, the writing that was on these tags would have disappeared. So I'm not going to write anything on there. I'm just going to stick it about right there. And of course, these were going down a production line. The workers were just slapping these on. So sometimes you don't want all the decals to look completely perfect because they weren't from the factory. We have this round decal for the oil filler cap. We of course have several that go onto the air filter. On the other side of the air filter, we have this auto light spark plugs decal. And it's going to fit between the ribs. Then on the front of the air cleaner, we have this sticker here. I've seen different variations of this. I've also seen that maybe this was never here in the first place, but it came in the kit, so I'm going to put it there. Over here, I'm going to put the air cleaner part number decal. Right here by the radiator cap, we have a decal for the antifreeze. Now in the engine bay on the driver's side shock tower, we have the decal for the service information. Opposite of that, we have a decal for the voltage regulator. This one's pretty neat because it's clear. We got a similar decal to place on the ignition coil. Next is the tire pressure decal. I've seen them in several places, either right here or back in here. And I think I'm going to put it back there because this particular decal is made so that if I were to curve this around, it's actually going to be too long to fit here on the glove box door. So I'm going to put it back in the glove box in there. I think that placement makes more sense and it's almost the perfect height to fit back there. Here in the trunk, we have some instructions for the jack that go up here on the bottom of the trunk lid, just like so. And then down here in this spot where the license plate goes, we have this decal stating to remove the tow hooks from shipping. That will go right there. And for the last one, I need to remove the spare tire. because under here is the jack. Well, it seems like this is a brand new one. It's never been opened. But we have this little decal that we need to apply to the jack, stating to reference the decal on the bottom of the trunk lid that we already put on. I think I'll just stick it right there. I am left with two decals, that, and I don't think these go on this car. This one I think is for if we had an oil bath air cleaner, and this one doesn't seem to be compatible with the filter and pump that I have on this car. So I'm going to leave these two off. I don't think they're used on this model. But I hope this helps if you had ordered one of these kits and you needed help finding out where the decals go. That's going to be it for today. Even though this Mustang looks like it's done, it's not. Like I said, the last 10% of a restoration is the hardest. There are some electrical issues with the car, uh, specifically with the neutral safety switch, which operates both the backup lights and prevents you from starting the car in any gear. The lights don't work 
and you can start it in any gear at the moment. The engine still needs to be tuned and timed, and there's no convertible top on the car. So the top needs to be put on, so does the boot that covers the top once it's folded down. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.